Hey guys, welcome back. It is that time. The season is starting tomorrow. Brooklyn and I head to Valley Farms Hatchery to pick up our meat birds. So today I have been working and making sure all of our brooders are ready. Heat lamps are working. We've got water in, so that will make it easy for tomorrow. We're picking up 125 birds and uh, we are excited. If you guys remember at the end of last season, I was done. I didn't want to butcher any more birds, but that's why you have the winter, you have the time off and you get back at it again. So we are ready for birds. Tomorrow morning, Brooklyn and I head out to pick them up. So follow along and we'll have meat birds back on the farm. Good morning, guys. We are on our way to pick up our first batch of chickens. Meat season officially begins today. We're quite excited about it. We are heading to Alabama to Valley Farms Hatchery. It's about a four hour drive for us. Um, it's not that bad. We're off of the highway. We're on back roads most of the way. That's basically why it's four hours because there's nothing straight around here. I've got my co-pilot with me. She enjoys coming. Um, what's your favorite part of the trip? <laughs> we do have a guilty pleasure of listening to some Dateline podcasts and uh, we enjoy spending the day together. So we stop and get lunch and just kind of enjoy the trip. Um, we enjoy getting our chickens the day they hatch, getting them to the brooder, just making sure they have the best, best possibility of doing well. Um, we have had our chicks shipped. Um, we picked them up at Valley Farms. You can pick up your hatchery, so if you're close, that may be an option you wanna do. Shipping is just fine as well. But we've got everything spaced out, at least in our minds, where we don't have a ton of butchers on top of each other. We'll have a break in between butchers and still have enough meat to supply us for our markets until the following butcher happens. So if we were to have a, a loss, or a, um, that would set us behind a little bit. So. We just like getting them, picking them up and bringing them home the same day. Um, it's worked out well for us. So we'll make this trip probably seven times this year. Um, today we're picking up 125 birds and uh, our meat season is officially underway. So we're gonna be able to talk to Ryan, the owner at Valley Farms Hatchery when, we're get, when we get there, ask him a few questions. If you guys are looking for a place to get your chicks, Valley Farms is a great option. All right, guys, hey, we're here at the hatchery. We've got our chickens. We've got 125 Cornish. I'm here with the owner, Ryan, and he's been nice enough to reach our, to answer a few questions for us. Um, I met Ryan probably about three or four years ago when we picked up a batch of chickens and I had reached out via email and he, I got a response from a guy named Ryan. Little did I know it was the owner. So <laughs> we knew we were at a good hatchery when the owner had the time to reach out to us and we've been coming here ever since. So. Ryan, you're kind of young. Um, we just want to know how long have you been doing the hatchery? I know you've been hatching chickens since you were younger, but how long have you been doing the hatchery? Well, I've been hatching chickens since about 2012. Probably was hatching them in 2010, but mm. the hatchery actually started in 2012. Okay, and how did you how did you start the hatchery? What was the process of that? Uh, well, the hatchery kind of started by accident. I just started hatching chickens backyard. I, literally out of my grandmother's laundry room <laughs> and um, we just grew from there. I started hatching a few chickens and I, whenever they grew up I got too many and started to try to sell them mm -hmm. and I put some ads on Craigslist of all places and apparently there are different Tri-Cities on Craigslist and I put them in the wrong Tri-Cities. Apparently I put them in Tri-Cities in North Carolina and Tennessee and so I had people from there calling and got customers that way <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah. And then over time, we just started shipping them to everybody. All right. Well, that's the problem with chicken math, huh? Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. is a real thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so now that we've got the hatchery here, um, we're doing a lot of Cornish cross. You want to tell some of the other breeds that you guys are offering this year? Uh, well, we have the Cornish and we also have a red broiler. Um, then we have several egg layers. We have white leghorns, brown sex links, black sex links, barred rocks, buff orpitans, black ostrilorps, 
several different varieties of egg layers. We even have a new Easter egg -er this year. Awesome, awesome. So if you guys are looking for chickens, we're gonna put the link down below here. Um, check them out on the website. Um, the last question, since we're doing a lot of meat birds, is why we're here. How many Cornish do you guys think you hatch out? Or I know you got a pretty good estimate per mm -hmm. year. Yeah, well, per year, it's, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> On a, a weekly basis, yeah. we hatch out between five and 10,000 Cornish. Amazing. Just depending on the time of the year. Like right now, we're doing upwards in the, closer to the 10. Wow. We so. could do more, we just don't have the room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I don't feel bad with 125. Someone out there is getting a ton more Cornish than we are. Yeah, so. we have customers that vary anywhere between 10 to 1,500 at a time. Wow. Wow, yeah, definitely wouldn't want to process those. So, mm -hmm. hey man, we appreciate you. Thank yeah. you for doing, taking time to do the interview. Yeah. Check out Valley Farms. We, we really enjoy them and we know you guys will too. Let's go ahead and get these birds home. <laughs> All right guys, we are back from the hatchery. Pretty much rained the whole time on our drive back. Brooklyn's starting the task. She's counting, so I'm not going to make her talk. We've Got 125, I wanna put 60 in this brooder and 65 in the other brooder. We're just gonna count and make sure. It's a little chilly in here today. We've got the heat lamps turned on. Once we put these down, we'll show you how we keep the heat inside of them. Um, so she's dipping beaks. You don't have to dip all their beaks. We like to just cause we're counting them, but they go around and you can dip a couple beaks and the rest of them will find it. So she's gonna get those unpacked and then I'm gonna work on the other brooder and let's check them out once we got them out of the boxes. Okay, we are in the first brooder here. We're gonna get this shut down shortly. They are active, <laughs> they must think I'm their mom, but uh, we've got 65 in this brooder and 66 in the other. So they gave us a couple extras, which are always nice. Um, but they are, you can see, actively moving and it is just amazing. These birds in eight short weeks will be ready to be processed and put in the freezer. These are an amazing, fast growing chicken. Some people don't like them, we love them. We'll do another video about why we love these Cornish cross. So this is brooder one, 65 birds, active and moving around, all looking good. Let's check out Brooklyn's brooder over here. And what did we say over here? 66. 66, that's right. All right, 66 birds in here. We went with the fine shavings. We used to do flake last year. I wanted to try the fine shavings. I've heard that they don't clump as much you guys have raised Cornish, you know they eat and they poop a lot. So I wanted to see if the fine shavings will help it not clump so much. I think it's going to be a good, good test. So if it doesn't work after this, we'll go back to the flake shavings. So anyway, we love these birds. We're excited to get started. Last year I was ready to be done just because we had done so much processing, but with that time off, we're glad to be back at it again and excited for this new season. I know customers are excited to be able to get pasture raised, corn free, soy free chicken, and uh, we're, we're happy to provide that for them. So first of, I think at least seven trips this year where we're heading to Alabama to get our chicks. It's always a good time. Brooklyn and I always have a good time doing it and uh, it's, it's not that bad of a drive. So everyone's looking good. I am definitely going to be trying to keep better notes this year. I've admitted before I am not the best note taker, how much feed's going in, how many losses and things like that. So I wanna do a lot better job this year of keeping track of that and uh, just seeing how these birds do. So awesome day, awesome time at the hatchery. We had a good, good trip, first trip. And we've got them this early because eight weeks, it will be our first market. So these will be ready. We don't like to do them when it's any colder. Um, usually I can get them out in two to three weeks depending on the weather, but these ones will probably be the longest in the brooder just because it's not as nice out right now. So you don't wanna do these birds when it's cold out. They just are not 
do not do very well with the cold temperatures. So anyway, here's to another market season. This is gonna be our second full season. We kind of did a half season our first year. So this is the second full season that we're actually preparing for the market. So I'm excited about that. So big thanks to Ryan, Valley Farms Hatchery. Make sure you guys check them out if you're in the market for chickens. Um, I forgot to mention his mom and dad work there. It's a family run hatchery and they're just, they're just good people. And you know, they care about you. And if you have issues, they will take care of it. So thank you to Valley Farms. We will be following these guys for eight weeks and uh, right up to the processing state. We've talked about doing classes. We did them one year. We didn't end up doing it last year. We may have classes of processing classes again. So be on the lookout if that's something you're interested in. So anyway, our first trip is done and uh, it was a good trip. No better day to be driving than in the rain because you can't do anything when it's raining on the farm anyway. So appreciate you guys following along if you haven't already. Make sure you like, subscribe, check us out on Instagram and also Facebook and don't forget to make the change. Alright guys, we'll see you on the next video.